decision. The, the, the president's latest problem, guys, is fallout over his nominee for Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Dr. Ronnie Jackson. The Navy Admiral, Admiral and White House physician is facing allegations over overprescribing medications, drinking on the job, and creating a unprofessional work environment. Democratic Senator John Tester, the ranking member on the Veterans Affairs Committee, spoke about those allegations yesterday. Here's what he had to say, along with comments from Dr. Jackson himself and President Trump. He is a physician for, uh, for the president, and uh, in the previous administration, we were told of stories there where he was uh, repeatedly drunk while on duty, where his main job was to take care of the most powerful man in the world. Uh, that's not acceptable. You've seen the allegations, a hostile work environment, allegations about potentially drinking on the job, over-prescribing medications. Are you saying those are categorically untrue? I'm saying I, 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 I'm looking forward to the hearing so we can sit down and I can explain everything uh, to everyone and answer all the senators' questions. Was so. there an IG report about the allegations? No, there was not. How much betting does the White House to be for you or formally announced as the nominee? Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I said to Dr. Jackson, what do you need it for? So uh, we'll see what happens. I don't want to put a man through who's not a political person. I don't want to put a man through a process like this. It's too ugly and too disgusting. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. He'll make a decision. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. What does he need it for? To be abused by a bunch of politicians that aren't thinking nicely about our country? I really don't think Personally, he should do it, but it's totally his. I would stand behind him. Totally his decision. Let's bring in now Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin. Senator, good to have you with us this morning. A good lot of ground you. to cover, but first of all, your reaction to the allegations against Dr. Jackson, a man who received commendation in his previous administration, President Obama himself heaping praise on Ronnie Jackson. We've actually seen uh, a lot of members of the Obama administration, even yesterday, rushing out to defend Dr. Jackson's reputation and his professionalism. Is it someone you'd be comfortable voting for <clears throat> to become the next secretary of the VA? Well, let me tell you first, the allegations that we're hearing are very disturbing and uh, need to be investigated. And I'm glad they've put a pause on his uh, confirmation hearing so that they can look more deeply into those. But I want to tell you that I had concerns about uh, Dr. Ronnie Jackson's nomination before these revelations because we know that the VA is entrusted with the care of nine million veterans who have served served our country and deserve the very best. The VA health system has had problems uh, in the past. They have problems that need to be overseen now and worked through. And I feared that uh, Dr. Jackson didn't have the type of managerial experience needed to uh, oversee such an important uh, but also uh, large uh, uh, entity. And so, you know, when I look at the problems we've seen with the waiting list scandal, with over prescription of narcotics um, with a variety of issues. We need somebody who is going to lean forward. Uh, I've passed bipartisan legislation to uh, in include great reforms across the VA system. Right. We need to see those fully implemented. And so I had my doubts uh, already and wanted a lot of questions answered uh, before these latest revelation or revelations that are very disturbing. Casey? Senator, I just want to say, uh, follow up on one thing you mentioned. So far, to our knowledge, uh, Ronnie Jackson has not been accused of overprescribing narcotics. It's been sleep aids right. and wakefulness medicines. I just want to make right. sure that you don't have information we don't have on that point. Uh, and I then also, not. okay. And then I, also to, to, to raise the broader question, it seems like the president is kicking the question of whether to continue this confirmation process uh, to Dr. Jackson. And right now there's no indication uh, that he's planning to withdraw. Do you think at this point there is a conceivable path forward for him to confirmation in the Senate? I do think it's much more difficult uh, with these revelations and also uh, with the IG report that I have not yet a had a chance to see, but uh, he denied that there was any and apparently the White House released one. Um, all of those uh, sort of mount up to some pretty high hurdles for uh, Dr. Jackson to continue with this process. Senator, it's Bob Costa here. 
where, where do you stand in your reelection race? So Wisconsin has turned more conservative than some people would have thought in the last few years. And you see a lot of conservative groups active in that state. You have Governor Walker running for reelection at the same time. Well, first of all, we have seen more outside uh, outside of state billionaires uh, pouring money into Wisconsin, uh, being active on television and on radio uh, with attack ads against me. Um, I recognize that Wisconsin is a battleground state, uh, but I think there's something more. I think that um, I have always focused on fighting for the people of Wisconsin, and I stand up to those outside special interests who have, uh, you know, protecting Wall Street and and the uh, drug corporations, and uh, they know that I stand for the people of Wisconsin, and so I don't think it's a coincidence that we're seeing all of this outside spending. That said, um, in part, uh, in large part because of uh, the work I've done uh, on behalf of the people of Wisconsin, we are seeing engagement like I've never seen before in our state. We had a special election in a state Senate seat in northwestern Wisconsin, a district that Trump won by 17 points in 16. Uh, this January, uh, a Democratic candidate, Patty Schachner, uh, won that district with 11 points, a 28-point flip. And as you were reporting elsewhere in the country, we've seen that type of momentum. We had a great nonpartisan spring race on April 3rd in Wisconsin, where a uh, progressive-minded, fair and impartial Supreme Court justice was elected with a 12-point margin. That hasn't happened in our state since 1995. So I see uh, an incredible engagement um, because people do want uh, uh, the Congress of the United States, the Senate of the United States focused on uh, people's needs and uh, focused on Wisconsin. And right now, Washington is not working for Wisconsin. All right. Thank you so much, Senator Tammy Baldwin. As always, we greatly appreciate you being on the show. And Casey, I wanted to go back to you for a second because you had asked a question about uh, Ronnie Jacks, and I, I don't know if you're hearing what what we keep hearing, especially from people that worked with him during the Obama administration, but we keep being warned not to get over our skis on some of these allegations that came out yesterday from Tester's office. Um, a, a lot of people in the, the last administration, people that have known Ronnie Jackson, who, let me just say, I don't think is qualified for this position, uh, but, but believe that uh, these reports of excessive drinking are part of a hit job that actually Jackson may have had some drinks on long trips uh, off duty, but then again, uh, everybody else did. And I'm hearing over and over again that never, uh, never, he was never drunk on the job and reports of him being the candy man is uh, is a ridiculous allegation. It's very interesting. I, I, are you hearing pushback from people that have worked with him in the past? Joe, my sense is that he was, and you, you alluded to this earlier in the show, very popular uh, with Obama administration staff, clearly well-liked by President Trump. Uh, so I, my question in all of this reporting, uh, there is some insinuation that there may be people who believe that there's someone that has an ax to grind against this man, and that certainly could be part of this unfolding story. But there does seem to be some indication from Tester's office that a lot of these complaints are coming from uniformed military personnel. And so it's possible that there is a divide in social circle and therefore understanding uh, of what's going on between people who were uh, civilians working on the political side and people working uh, in the military. And you also have to remember that oftentimes in military culture, there is a pretty intense uh, incentive not to talk, not to tell a story. Uh, so I do think that we're still a ways from understanding the full set of facts around this. Clearly, Dr. Jackson really wants the chance uh, to take a stand for himself. He wants to be able to go uh, to that open hearing. So if that happens, I do think at some point uh, the truth will come out one way or the other. Bob Costa, does it look like uh, he's going to get his hearing, that he's going to get a vote? The president kicked open the exit door yesterday to show Dr. Jackson he could leave this process if he wants to. At the same time, colleagues of Dr. Jackson tell me that in the Post 
that he, he wants to still go through with this hearing. He told that to the president yesterday, in part because of what Senator Tester said. Senator Tester and other critics of the nominee came out with these allegations, and, and Dr. Jackson's telling his confidants he, he wants to see some of this aired out a little bit. If, if he moves forward, the White House knows it could be quite unruly in terms of what's brought up, allegations from the past, but at this point they don't have a, a plan B. And Bill Crystal, we'll, we will end this segment where we began this segment with me asking for a response to Donald Trump calling Kim Jong-un an honorable and open man. I lob that softball down the middle of the plate, swing away. You know, they warned me if I didn't vote for Donald Trump that we'd have a president who was coddling horrible dictators with an unbelievable amount of blood on their hands. And here we are with Donald Trump. I mean, can you imagine if, I mean, this is such an obvious thing to say, but can you imagine if Barack Obama had said this? What, what would be happening on Fox News and in the Wall Street Journal and among conservative uh, commentators and Republicans in Congress today. But, but somehow Trump says it, and it's all part of a skillful diplomatic effort that he's engaged in. And incidentally, I'm not, well, well, we'll see what happens in North Korea. So far, they have done nothing. They have said a few things. We have zero empirical, verifiable evidence that they have changed one aspect of one part of their nuclear program. Bill Crystal, Bob Costa, thank you both very much. Coming up next on Morning Joe, we'll go back to those big developments surrounding Iran and a new warning from President Trump. He says that country will pay a price like few have ever paid before, he said, if it jumpstarts its nuclear program. And keeping Iran in check is one of the reasons why the president says he is staying in Syria despite his gut telling him to get out. Dr. Jeffrey Sachs says the president should trust his gut and pull American troops out of Syria. He joins the conversation along with the New York Times columnist Brett Stevens next on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.